getting started with bronze clay tutorial. My name is Tanya Davidson. To get started, let's cover tools and supplies needed. You'll need bronze clay, cling wrap, spritzer with water, essential lavender oil, scissors, badger balm or glove in a bottle, wet wipes, non-stick work surface, playing card or slats, roller, tissue blade, craft knife or pattern cutters, texture rubber, mat sheets, badger brush, size zero brush, clay shaper, clay keeper, and clay container. Recently I discovered that glove in a bottle works great to keep the bronze clay from sticking to the skin and discoloring it. It also keeps the areas underneath your nails cleaner. Simply take your nails and scrub them into a little bit on your hand and that will get underneath the nails and then go ahead and apply it to your hands. It is not greasy, which is great. It works perfectly for keeping clay from sticking to texture sheets, the work surface, and the tools. You can also use Badger Balm if you have that more readily available. Since we are going to use texture sheets for this tutorial, let's use a Badger brush with some gloves in a bottle on our rubber texture sheet. Just take a little bit on your finger, put it onto the texture sheet, and then go ahead and rub it into all of the grooves. And you want to do that for all the textures that are next to the areas that you're going to be applying the clay to in case you over uh, extend your area that you're rolling out. You don't want it to stick to that area as well. We also want to put a little bit of our t on our tools, especially the tissue blade. You can do this with your fingers if this is an old blade. If it's a new blade, do not touch the blade with your fingers. You want to use a badger brush and apply it. I always put a piece of electrical tape on the back side so I know which side to grab when I'm grabbing for my tools and that way I don't cut myself. You also want to coat your work surface with just a little bit of whatever's left over of your glove in a bottle or your badger balm. And you also want to coat your roller with whatever's left on your hands. Let's open your bronze clay packages. I use scissors to cut open the outer silver packaging which can be tossed. Now cut open the plastic packaging in order to easily remove the clay. You don't want to roll up this clay. What you want to do is fold in the, the corners, the edges, pinch them in. The moisture has receded away from the plastic packaging into the center of the clay. So we need to make the clay homogeneous by pinching the edges and pressing them in. This will even out the moisture. You'll notice that the clay seemed dry on the corners and was cracking, but as we continue to knead it to the center, it's becoming more and more moist. Okay, I think we've got it. Now I can just roll it into a ball. And I'm going to stick it into the cling wrap. The cling wrap is great. It sticks to itself, so when you press it down, if you're working, it's already covered and it keeps the air away from your clay. When you're done, just stick those together, twist, and it doesn't come undone, unlike saran wrap. So there's no need for chip clip. I will then stick this clay that we've opened into the refrigerator. I will take out of the refrigerator a ball of clay that has already been prepared. Bronze clay tends to stiffen when warm, so working with cool clay will provide more ease of use. Perhaps you've noticed when working with previously used leftover clay, when you roll it out, there are small cracks or lines in your flat patty. This is caused by folding the clay or rolling it out and not wedging it first. You've trapped air and the clay is not homogeneous throughout. Because bronze clay and PMC art clay doesn't melt, it centers. Those cracks and tiny hairline fractures will remain inside the clay thus leaving our finished pieces with less strength. So let me show you a few tips about wedging your clay. I am right-handed, so my left hand will be my weak hand in this demonstration. We are going to place the ball of clay in our bottom weak hand face up. We will then place our strong hand over the clay in the inner palm. We are going to push and roll our hands together, pressing firmly the clay, rolling it towards the thumb of our bottom hand. This flattens the clay and moves air and hairline cracks caused by folding the clay. By wedging the clay, you're going to remove those cracks from your work. Let's wedge this clay. So we stick it in the palm of our hand, press and move out, and that's going to get rid of all the cracks when we roll it out. 
Wedging is an easy step, but well worth the effort. I'm going to roll out my clay and I want to show you how to get a great texture using a rubber texture sheet. First we are going to roll out our clay two cards thicker than we desire for the clay to be finished when it is fired. With bronze clay we want to work a bit thicker than we work with silver metal clay or art clay and PMC. So I'm going to choose seven cards. The slats are a great option, but for this pur purpose, they only come in six and eight card thickness, so I'm going to use regular playing cards. The goal is to make your clay five cards thick, even at the thinnest area of your texture. Here are some pieces that are in the raw bronze clay form. To get perfect texture, I first roll out an extra thick flat patty. When I roll out my patty, I want to make sure that I keep the rollers always touching my slats this way. Do not be tempted to go this direction. I will roll it once or twice, and then I'm going to pick it up, flip it each direction. Now I'm ready to roll the patty out on the texture. I recommend buying two to three textures of the same brand when you decide to buy a texture. Not all rubber textures are the same height. I want to make sure that I have room on the rubber for my slats or card. When rolling, start in the middle of the patty and roll away from you and then roll towards you. This way you will not get any ghosting. By rolling it out two cards thicker, the seven cards, and then moving down to five cards, we can pick up a lot of texture and still maintain proper thickness. To remove the clay, simply grab the clay at the top and pull back. I find that bronze clay seems to give or stretch more than the silver metal clay, so pay close attention to how much you pull. You don't want to stretch the clay. Place this newly textured patty on the nonstick work surface. You can use your tissue blade or craft knife or pattern cutter to remove the excess clay. Now you can set it aside to dry. You can drill holes in the clay after it is bone dry. You'll get more pristine hole for both a jump ring and stone by drilling it later. I work in steps. All of my sanding holes and connecting with other pieces of clay are done in the leather hard bone dry stage. This allows you to stand and finish between additions to the work. Bronze clay wants to warp when it is drying, so it is wise to flip it and press down occasionally to make sure that it does not warp while it's drying. This will happen in more dry climates than humid climates. I don't recommend hot plates. A dehydrator will work if you are able to set it on the coolest temperature. You'll want to flip it every minute or so. Once I've flipped it twice and it's leather hard, then I'll set it on a piece of Teflon on top of it or something a little heavier. A four inch piece of glazed tile works well. Now let's talk about how to store our bronze clay that's left over. We want to take our clay and we want to form it into strips by ripping it and stacking it. And if you have a, a round ball, you just want to flatten it out and add it to this. Then we want to kind of pinch those edges together and press down. That's going to get rid of any air, so we're not folding more air into our clay. Then we're going to flatten it and put it in our cling wrap, and we're going to spray, spritz some water with three drops of lavender oil into it uh, on the clay. And then we can fold those edges in a little bit and if it's really dry, flatten it out again and add another spritz. Then we're going to um, close it all up in the cling wrap. Now you can store it in these if you have those available like that, or you can store it in a clay container. Usually these come with inserts and you put a makeup sponge in it and you put, keep this inside of here to keep the moisture inside of like a humidor. But because bronze clay needs to be stored in the refrigerator, we are not going to use the insert or the sponge. We're just going to stick it in our clay container, tighten it up, and stick it in the fridge for the next use.